Hello once again. Um, I just want to take a reading from Acts chapter 2 today. I want to speak about tongues. I want to speak about the mystery of tongues and the provision of tongues to be known by men. Now if we look in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 1, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confounded, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marvelled, saying to one another, Look, uh, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? And then it goes on to mention all the languages in which they were born. And then it finishes off with Cretes and Arabs. Christians and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. And in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, it says, And though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And we're speaking about the tongues of men and of angels. So this is a gift of the Holy Spirit, speaking with the gift of tongues of men and of angels, which God can use through born-again Christians at various times who are filled with the Spirit. Now, the gift of tongues has nothing to do whatsoever with linguistic ability because it is a gift of the Holy Spirit and when used is empowered by the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues is to be used in communication with God. It is a prayer language of the Spirit. We can pray in the Spirit, we can sing in the Spirit and we can pray in tongues, we can sing in tongues and worship God. But it is a prayer language of the Spirit and if we look in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, it says... For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But you know, even though it states that we speak mysteries, those that speak in tongues, God has made provision that tongues can be used to be understood by men. As we have just read on the day of Pentecost, it provided a similar situation today that it can be, certain tongues can be understood by men even though God at the majority of times uh, we speak mysteries and also with the tongues of uh, angels as well at various times through certain people. I've spoken and used the tongue of angels, I've spoken mysteries and I've spoken in tongues that would be understood by men. I know that. Uh, I haven't got time to go to get into all that today though. Uh, number two, and tongues are also directed manward when the gift of interpretation is used, as in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse 13. Therefore let him who speaks in the tongue pray that he may interpret. Now the situation at Pentecost was different from the situation that is explained by Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, when he's speaking about tongues, because the tongues were unknown to the speaker, but understood by the hearers. So on the day of Pentecost the people, the, Gal uh, the, the apostles of Jesus were speaking in tongues that were unknown to them but the people that were present from every nation under heaven understood them and this is what I'm speaking about today. So you know they heard them speaking in their own languages the wonderful works or tongues, the wonderful works of God and so it's a different situation from 1 Corinthians 14 because in 1 Corinthians 14 as we have just read they needed interpretation which was different from the day of Pentecost. That didn't need interpretation. They understood them. But God can still cause a similar situation as Pentecost to happen in our meetings today, as I have uh, just said. We can use a German tongue or a Russian tongue to be understood by a German or Russian that might come into one of our meetings. And, and then to confirm the tongue, it can cause it to be interpreted in English. This has happened many times in our present day. I've got many, many stories of this. So let's not limit God by our limited understanding. And sometimes a, a refusal to accept the truth, what the Bible teaches about tongues. You know, God is working today through this wonderful gift. And the Bible, Paul speaks about tongues and he said, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than you all because he, he understood the value of the importance of tongues and the, this wonderful prayer language of the Spirit and also communicating with God and worshipping God in spirit and in truth. 
Um, there's a lot more I'd like to say about tongues, especially when we can move into, when we start to speak in tongues, you know, when we're communicating with God, and then when we start to, uh, from that we start to pray in English, we, we, we're really then praying in the perfect will of God. A wonderful gift, and I would encourage you all today, if you don't speak in tongues, to ask God to give you, uh, the Bible says you don't receive because you don't ask, but you have to come in faith and ask him for this gift. So, uh, you know, I pray God that will bless you today as you listen to this word and he'll give you hunger for him and that you'll ask him to fill you with his spirit and so that you will speak this wonderly, wonderful language uh, from heaven given by God to you. Thank you for listening today. And don't forget, it's all in the Bible. Read it. Wonderful. Read 1 Corinthians 14. It will really encourage you and give you faith to seek God for this, uh, to ask God to fill you with his spirit so that you may speak in tongues.